Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to design and create your own cartoon pop art poster from scratch. The first step is to create a new document. Go to File and New. You can make it any size, but for this example, make the width 1500 pixels, the height 870 pixels, and the resolution 150 pixels per inch. Make sure the color mode is RGB and 8 bits per channel. Then click OK. Click the foreground color to open the color picker. In the hexadecimal field, type in 16B7F9. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Your foreground color is now the color we typed in. To fill your background with this color, press Alt-Delete on Windows or Option-Delete on a Mac. Zoom out of your document by pressing Ctrl or Command and the minus key on your keyboard a couple of times. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Open your Custom Shape tool and open your Shape thumbnails. Click the gear icon to open your list of custom shape presets. Click Symbols and click OK to replace the current shapes with the shapes from Symbols. Click this icon, which is called Registration Target 2. Click the gear icon and tick Define Proportions and check From Center. Click the Shape Mode. If you're using a Photoshop version earlier than CS6, the shape mode is here. Make sure the stroke has no color. Its symbol has the red diagonal line across it. Click the Fills color box and the Color Picker icon. Type in 44C4F9. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Click on the center of your document and drag the shape outside the edges of your document. To hide the paths, press Ctrl or Command H. To fit it back on your canvas, press Ctrl or Command plus zero. For now, don't be concerned if the pattern isn't exactly centered on your document. We'll take care of that later. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Open your Polygon tool and click the Fills color box. Click the Color Picker icon, pick White, and click OK. Click on your document to open the Create Polygon window. Type in the width and the height of your document, which in this example is 1500 by 870 pixels. For the number of sides, type in 20. Check Star, indent the sides by 60%, and check Smooth Indents. Then click OK. The shape will be off to the side, but don't be concerned. After we create all the shapes, we'll center them all at the same time. Reduce its opacity to 25%. We're going to make this shape bigger. To do this, open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. At the top of your screen, click the Chain Link icon. This locks the width and the height together. Type in 125% in either field. Notice the width and the height have the same percentage. Press Enter or Return, or click the check mark at the top. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Click the Fill Color box and the Color Picker icon. For this shape, type in ED0909. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Click on your document, type in the width and the height, and for this shape, indent the sides by 70%. Then click OK. Make a new layer. Click the Fill Color box the Color Picker icon, and this time pick Black. Click on your document, type in the width and height, 
And for this shape, indent the sides by 90%. We'll make one more shape. Make a new layer. Open the color picker, and this time, pick white again. Type in the width and the height, and indent the sides by 99%. We're ready to center all the shapes on the document. With the top layer active, shift-click on Shape 1 to highlight all the layers between it and the top layer. Click your Move tool and press Ctrl or Command A to select them all. Click the Align Horizontal Centers icon and the Align Vertical Centers icon. To deselect it, press Ctrl or Command D. Group all the shapes into a folder by pressing Ctrl or Command G. Let's name it Shapes. We're ready to add text. Open your Horizontal Type tool and choose a font. I'm using Death Rattle BB Regular which I downloaded from defont.com. For your convenience, I provided its link in the video description or project files. I'll start with a size of 200 points, sharp, and center text. Click the color box and type in FFD800. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Click on your document and type your text. I'll type my first character and press the space bar to make a space between it and the third letter in the word. The reason is because the second letter of the word is going to be placed in this empty space. It'll be bigger than the other characters and will be treated separately. Double click on an empty space of the text layer to open its layer style window. Click stroke. I'll make the size 18 pixels, however, depending on the size and resolution of your document, you may want to adjust this amount. Make sure the position is outside, then click OK. Make a copy of your text by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Make the original text layer active and double click it to highlight the text. I'll type the letter A, which replaces the original characters in this layer. To make your character larger, you can either slide the text icon to the right or type in a larger point size. To reposition it, open your Move tool and move it. The letters are too cramped, so I'll make the other text layer active. Click between the characters and press and hold Alt or Option as I press the right arrow key on my keyboard. To reposition and angle your text, shift-click on your lower text to highlight both text layers, and press Ctrl or Command T to open your transform tool. Go to a corner, and when you see a curved double arrow, rotate the transform to an angle you like. To reposition it, go inside the transform and move your text. If you want to adjust its overall size, Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it out or in. Then press Enter or Return. Click the top text layer to make it active, and go to Filter, Pixelate, and Color Halftone. Click Rasterize, and keep the default settings. To apply this filter for your remaining character, make its layer active and press Ctrl or Command F to repeat the last filter. The last step is to give the text a drop shadow. Shift click on the top layer to highlight both text layers and click the icon at the upper right of the layers panel. Click Convert to Smart Object. This allows us to add more filters and layer styles to the text. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. 
Double click on an empty layer of the smart object to open the layer style window. Click Drop Shadow. Make the opacity 20%, the distance 30 pixels, and the size 0. Then click OK. Notice the drop shadow is the same thickness as your stroked text. If we didn't convert the text into a smart object, the drop shadow would be a lot thinner because it would only be applied to the original text without its stroke. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.